good morning and welcome to day two of um, the AAC Early Starts Conference. I am happy to see a handful of you here and I know more people are on their way. I am gonna share my screen and go into my presentation for today. And hopefully more friends can join us along the way. So my name is Rachel Langley and I am a speech language pathologist. Um, I worked in the public schools for 20 years in Michigan. And here we support kids from age, from birth and early intervention through age 26. We're the only state in the country that goes past that 21 cutoff. And we have some additional years for um, kind of transition supports. But today we're here to talk about those youngest kids. And here in Michigan, we talk about that as an early on for the birth to three and then um, early childhood special education for three to five. So I love that we have a lot of families and professionals that are interested in talking about how AAC can support those kids. Um, myself and my colleague, Patty Hine, will present later today to, um, to uh, a, a another audience. You're welcome. I hope you can join us. Um, and that session is focused on family-centered AAC and talking a bit about how um, Assistive Wear went about creating a, a, a new revolutionary app that can um, focus on the child and the family and keep them at the center of intervention. So what I'm going to do here is only for about 10 minutes, give you a little preview um, and a brief demonstration of the new um, AAC solution from Assisted Wear called Proloquo. But first, let me tell you a bit more about the company. So just last fall, I left my role in the public schools as an AAC consultant, and I work um, on a, as a contractor for Assisted Wear, among some other things that I do. And I didn't take this switch lightly. I really... Um, wanted to make sure I was able to continue my personal mission, which is to continue to share with as many people as possible the knowledge about good AAC supports and what that looks like. Um, so I found a system where with a mission that really matched mine. They have a social mission more than being just a software development company. Their goal is to make AAC an available and accepted means of communication. Um, and it started way back more than 10 years ago, about 12 years ago, with the launch of Proloquo to Go, which many people are familiar with. Um, right now it is uh, the top selling AAC app in the App Store. It is the first app that came to the App Store back in 2009. So back when it was just the iPod and then later the iPhone and iPad. Um, but what we really saw happen with Proloco to Go coming to market in that way is that we democratized the access to high tech AAC. And that meant rather than having to um, go through professional channels and go through a medical channel or wait for a school um, that we didn't have to, schools really weren't providing AAC the way we are now. But um, we didn't have to go through a medical route to get a durable medical equipment that was had an exorbitant price tag in order to start AAC. Um, having it in the app store meant it was available to anyone and we could start wherever we wanted to start. And so we're proud of the fact that this app in its infancy really democratized that access to high tech AAC. And it's, it's grown and evolved over the past 10 years. And so part of what, was we did as a company, as Sister Wear, looked back at that 10 years of experience and thought, what have we learned about AAC? And what we know is that um, when we look at all that user data over a decade, about 40% of the users of Proloquo to Go have access to a grid size of 20 buttons or less. And if you've used Proloquo to Go, you know that upon setup, it suggests that you instead consider a seven by 11 grid or a 77 grid size. That's the default size we expect and recommend people start with in Proloquo to go. But we know for a variety of reasons, um, Proloquo to go is very flexible and you can adapt and adjust the grid size. What we've seen is that many, 40% of our users have been offered a grid size that's very small. 20 buttons or less is not a lot of language. 
Um, and 18% of our Proloco to go users use a basic communication setup. And again, if you've seen Proloco to go and in the setup, you have an option to use what we have called crescendo, which is a vocabulary set with lots of core vocabulary and French vocabulary, or you can do an alternative where you use the basic communication setup and that's set up differently. 18% of our users are still using that basic communication setup. And mostly the biggest thing is that when we look at all the data um, that Proloco to go is mainly used for requesting. Words like I want, colors, and food are the most frequently used vocabulary. And we really worked as a company to provide some resources um, through our, our website. There's a section called Learn AAC that gives some good information about getting started. And then you may have heard of um, Core Word Classroom, which was created specifically to talk about how you could teach and introduce core vocabulary in a real um, kind of organized and systematic way. But collectively, it's still, we still haven't made an impact. We'd hope that people um, aren't yet seeing the wide access to vocabulary that could be available through programs like Proloquo to Go. So over the past three years, it caused us to where to step back and take a look and really reflect on what we know now what's happened in our field for the past 10 years and start over. Now by starting over, please hear me in this, Proloco to Go is still part of our software. We're still supporting it um, and plan to continue to support it. Um, but this new solution that we came up with has a different purpose. So when you start back, you look at all the things we've learned and you think, how can we make another program um, that supports and meets some of the needs of the community in a better way. So we envisioned a solution. And in this way, we pictured more than just an AAC app, but an AAC service that can both support and offer language through an AAC app that was robust, but also easy to use. And also hand in hand with that, I'm glancing at the numbers to see if more people are making it. And it looks like we're up to 28 people. So hopefully people are finding their way in. And if so, welcome. My name is Rachel Langley. I'm here on behalf of Assistiveware today and sharing with you a bit about Proloquo, the new AAC solution from Assistiveware. Um, my colleague, Patty, is one of our fantastic support team members um, from Assistiveware, and she is in and monitoring the chat. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. And if we can't get to anything, I'll answer it at the end. But um, so in addition to offering an AAC app that's robust and easy to use and easy to learn, um, we also developed a coaching app that was part of the vision that goes hand in hand with that. So if someone were to get this app and have no access to um, a skilled and qualified SLP or teacher that has a lot of good um, understanding of AAC, that they could access that information themselves. So that Proloquo coach is that coach is the name of the um, the learning app that goes hand in hand with Proloquo, and you'll see this cute little fox icon represents Proloquo coach. It was really designed with par parents and other non experts in mind, so we were careful not to use a lot of jargon terms. We're going to break everything down to make sure it's accessible and understandable. It's written at a fifth grade reading level so that um, lots of people can access it and um, not feel overwhelmed. It's paced. Um, you can sell, you can walk through at your own pace and work through the different chapters of learning, um, but it's small bite-sized chunks. And that's based on what we know from research of how people learn. Um, you can sit through an hour long course, but you might only hold and remember a few details. But if you can get a little bite at a time, practice it and apply it and get another little bite at a time, you're more likely to keep those skills and retain them and use them in the future. So that's how coaches developed. There is um, a learn section and then there's a practice section. Um, and through that, you get to um, experience both sides of that where you get a little information and figure out what it looks like in Proloquo. And then there's regular opportunities um, where you can take a, a quiz to head and check for your understanding. And probably the most powerful thing, um, because I really came on board after Assisted Where had developed this, and this was the piece I was most impressed by, is that there's um, 
there's uh, um, interaction available, not just reminders. It can remind you to come and read your next chapter, but you can ask questions of the support team um, through a messaging feature that's in the app and they'll respond to you in a pretty prompt way. So the, the last thing on this slide is that you can share information and I'll demo that when we go into ProLocal Coach next, um, that if I'm reading a brief article about um, wait time, and I think it's really cool and fascinating, and I want to share it with the teacher, the paraprofessional I'm working with, I just hit share and I can send it to them through email or text or however, um, and they don't have to have the app installed to read it, it comes to them as a web link and they would click on that and access that. So um, I'm going to switch right now to my iPad and give you a little preview, a little demo of ProLocal Coach. Hey, looks like we're up to about 31 people. Looks good. People are coming along. Just checking. Oh, some people are in the other room. Please come on over and join us. Um, I'm going to stop sharing from there so I can instead share from my iPad. So welcome, and if you're just joining us, um, this is the tech check. This is the time to work all the kinks out. So um, thanks for joining us. My name is Rachel, and I'm giving you a little preview of ProLocal Coach, which is a portion of the, the AAC solution from Assisted Wear. Coach gives you small bite-sized information. You can see each of these kind of um, graphics here represents a chapter. I have little um, orange check marks next to mine because I've completed those chapters. But as you go farther down, um, the series after that is all kind of locked. So you have to walk through it in a sequential way. Um, say I'm going into this chapter, getting to know ProLoquo. There's two sections, there's learn, and then there's practice. Under learn, I'm gonna read small bite-sized pieces of information, learn how the words are grouped in ProLoquo. It gives me a little bit of information about how it's organized. If I really want to share this here in the upper right corner, I can just use the share feature and send it off to someone. Um, and then after I've learned it, I can go over to the practice side and it'll give me a task to say, let's practice adding a button in the food folder. What does that look like? And it gives you the steps to do that, encourages you to go over to ProLoco Pro and practice adding. When I'm done with the chapter, it'll tell me great job and tell me I've finished that chapter. And then I will get a quiz um, to check for my understanding and see if there's any other questions that I have. So back on this main page, you'll see this home page is where I see all the learning. The next tab over here on the bottom um, records and reflects the usage of ProLoquo. And we'll talk in a minute of how ProLoquo is really team-based. You purchase it based on the AAC user, and then everyone around that AAC user gets free access to ProLoquo. So this usage data reflects the access of whole team. So at a certain amount of time, if they've used it more or less or not at all, um, you'll get kind of feedback for the past two weeks about how your usage data is going. The next icon across the bottom is support. There's some frequently asked questions, but if I have a question or I'm stuck, I can always send a message to the support team and they'll get back with you typically pretty quickly within a few hours it says but in my experience it's it's typically even less than that and we know this is helpful because sometimes you know families or even professionals are um, accessing it maybe over the weekend and they can't get to their their typical team who is supporting them but they can shoot a message and get an answer so that's pro local coach it's meant to be bite-sized learning to make the knowledge about AEC really accessible and approachable. Um, and I'm gonna now share back my screen and share a little bit about ProLoquo, the AAC solution. So the objectives for ProLoquo, which I know a lot of people call the original app ProLoquo to go, are called, they just call it, shorten it to ProLoquo, but ProLoquo is the new AAC solution. Um, with a new vocabulary we call Crescendo Evolution. It's meant to be easy to learn, non-overwhelming. It's really efficient. Um, the One of the most impressive things to it is that the it's got a shallow hierarchy. So instead of going into a folder and tabbing over in another folder and tabbing over in another folder, and you end up really deep into the vocabulary, you access a huge vocabulary in a much more shallow organization. So you don't, you can't get lost deep, deep in folders. 
um, there's a fixed motor plan where the vocabulary stays in a consistent location. And here's the one thing for me as an AAC consultant, it's considered unbreakable. Um, the vocabulary that's there is there. You can't add or remove. You can't add, I'm sorry. You can't remove or edit the existing vocabulary that comes in Crescendo Evolution. You can customize and add additional words. The fact that this adds power to the motor planning is a huge deal. And um, we're already seeing it um, and its efficiency be a lot more consistent for our, um, our users. It's really, it's robust. It really has... Um, three times the vocabulary of Proloco to go and other apps out on the market. Um, it's age inclusive and um, age respectful where we don't have um, a bunch of French vocabulary that's targeted any one age group. You can always add and customize um, and add personalization. Um, there's a cool feature I'll show you called related words, which supports rich vocabulary development and literacy development. And there's always room to add. I want to get moving a little bit through this. So I'm just going to jump to um, a demonstration. So we still have time. At the end of this, in about five minutes, we will give away a free license to one of our assistive wear products. If you'd like to try out Proloquo um, or use for Proloquo to go, you're welcome to make a choice of which, which, um, which app and which program from our suite of apps you'd like to select. So stick with us for about five more minutes. Um, Here's some demonstrations, some kind of screenshots of the features that I'm about to show you. Um, we do have some static core that stays in place. So even if you go within a category, we have some consistent access to core vocabulary words. Um, so I'm just going to pop over because time is short and I need to leave my full screen and pop back over. How many people? We're up to 46. Hi and welcome. This is the tech check session. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm early for the, I'm teaching the next session. Oh, you're welcome to be here. I just have like five more minutes. This is like the warm up session no, no, here. No, no, right. <laughs> Almost done. Just a few more minutes. I'm sharing. If you're new, I know some people are just kind of arriving. There's a little classroom one, classroom two um, mix up this morning. My name is Rachel Langley. I'm a speech language pathologist and I work on, I'm here demonstrating um, Proloquo, the new AAC solution from Assistive Wear. Assistive Wear is happy to sponsor this tech check this morning and we'll be giving away a license in just a minute. So this is the main screen of Proloquo. Um, as you can see, it's a little, um, it's calm, it's organized, it's pretty clean and pretty easy to understand. What we've discovered is that it's pretty intuitive that um, users typically don't need much of an explanation to say, hey, these tabs at the top, they're related to the column that they represent. So this column is pronouns. If these, these are the top six pronouns that we know from word usage get used most often. But if my pronoun isn't there, or related words, there it is. I can just touch the tab at the top. The next column there is kind of helping verbs and sensing verbs. The dark pink column is, is um, action words and main verbs. Um, what we know by this color coding is I can help. I can even say like, oh, I know I'm looking for. I want. What do I want? Oh, it's a, hmm, I think it's, I'm going to go into food and I'm going to go to a category. So even when I'm within a food category, you see that I have some static core that has stayed in that place. So really I could have just gone to food to say, I want taco. But you know what? Nobody really says I want taco. We always want more than one taco, right? So if you look far over on this right column here, you'll see this grammar column is populated and I can easily add grammatical endings and if I pick tacos, it just replaces the original taco and adds the S at the end. We know that not all of our really young and emergent users are going to use grammar at, at, at the beginning, and that's why it's kind of off to the side and non assimilated but it is a quick way to add and make this um, a better solution for lifelong. As you grow, you are ready to add those word endings. I want tacos. It's right there. So this, um, you'll see I cleared the word, so my related word column is now empty. These are my small words, my kind of, um, no, what's the word? The words that join things together. <laughs> Sorry, Friday, my words are gone. Um, but the motor planning is so consistent within here, um, I don't have to uh, travel back up out of a folder. 
So the other thing I wanted to show you is words like um, this column turns into a related word column. So if, good. I, if I say good, you'll see this changes. The little words go away. And instead, I have what we call related words. These are conceptually related vocabulary that add some, um, they expand upon the original idea. So the main concept is something is good. But maybe I want to say it is, whoops, maybe I want to say it's not good. just good, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's Amazing. Amazing. Right. I can change those words. And again, if my kids aren't yet reading, my learners aren't yet using literacy that they can either scan through or do even auditory scanning to hear which one they want. And when they stop, that's the one that stays on their message bar. You'll see that if, if a word has alternative um, word endings, those will also appear in that grammar column. So again, if I go back good. to good, the other versions of good are good. Better best good better best right so those are the features of related words and grammatical endings that are two new features in proloquo i would love to show you more join patty and myself later this morning after karen's presentation and we will um, give a, a more in-depth demonstration and talk a bit more about, about proloquo but for now before i pass it back to tana i want to do a quick uh giveaway so let me share my screen again Okay, nope. So Proloquo became available about a year ago. March last year was available in the US. Um, there's some different ways to do it, but the thing we're most proud of is that the licensing is based on the user. So if I have one person that needs to use AAC, I buy the license once and everyone around them, mom, grandma, SLP, teacher, babysitter, grandma, whoever, though all those people can have access to that child's vocabulary at no extra charge. They all also get access to coach. So if they are new to AAC, they can work through the, the learning component for free. There's a bit of information about the pricing. You can check it out in the app store or on the website. Um, for today, I wanted to go through and gift one of our lucky attendees with one product from our catalog of apps. If you would please, um, reach out to me or send me privately through here your email at the end of this. I'm going to pull up chat and nope, not chat, participants. I'm going to pull the participant list. Who's here? 50 people. Okay. You got like a one in 50 chance, my friends. Oops. And put you into a magic spinner wheel. Oh no, I can't grab my list. You guys figuring out the room? I noticed some more chatter and conversation happening there. Let me know if I can assist with the raffle, Rachel, I'm here. Yeah. I'm trying to grab, I can't move the names over in the way I thought I could. So that's not so fun. Beth has a trick. She just closes her eyes and rolls her mouse over people's names. <laughs> <laughs> I had a spinner and everything, but I'm, I'm trying to grab the whole participant list and it's not working the same. Maybe it's not the same when you're part of the, the host sharing. Um, okay, super, super technical. I stopped on Rosie. Rosie, you don't have a last name, but you're the only Rosie it appears in this meeting. Rosie, are you here and listening? Let's see. Rosie's the winner of our license and I will get in touch with Rosie and let her know how to claim that. You get the um, program of your choice from Proloco. That could be Proloco to go, our new solution, Proloco and Coach, or one of our other apps. So. Thank you, Tana, for letting me introduce and talk a bit about it. And I hope everyone, I feel like it gave you the appropriate buffer everyone needed this morning because it's Friday. Hopefully you all made it here and you're ready to listen to Karen and